Good day guys, welcome back. Um so yes, I finally beaten um Ori in the um, World of the Wisps. Now that was a um interesting game at the best of time guys. So unlike now I'm just gonna talk about the previous game for a second before we get too far into this one. Unlike the um Blind Forest guys, this one was a bit more harder because not everything was told where they are. So, there is a little bit of looking around, um, a bit of mucking around, a little bit of online research and shit like that. And I'm reusing the S word. There goes my channel. Um, nah, but seriously guys, um, yeah, so, yeah, this one was an interesting game. Now, it's much longer than the previous one. The previous one's, I think, about three hours, give and take. It depends how fast you do it and how well you are. So, if you play it on easy and normal, for example, you can get it through done for an hour and a half, two hours tops. Um, but, yeah, um, this game on your hand, no, it took me like a, a number of hours to do it, like, I think it said, said it's about 7 hours, 8 hours, something like that. So it's a different, a differently, um, a lot more time, nearly 3 times the, the amount of time in the previous one, which is great. So I like Ori, guys, um, that's, they yeah, are fantastic games. Um, this one is a very sad story, though, because it's very, it's a bit different to the previous one, but the same in some parts. But, yeah, I'm going to just explain the story. Um, so, basically what happens, it based off the um, ending of the last one, so the egg finally hatches, and there's a new owl in the family. So, it's only a small little owl. Um, you may notice his wings, that one of his wings are a bit damaged, and they don't, he can't fly properly. So, what they end up doing is um, using that feather from the previous, uh, pre previous game, um, they tie it onto him so he can fly, and he can actually fly with it. Um, he gets too excited and ends up flying into the, the, another area. This is where the World of the Wisp comes into play. Because he flies into that area, and that area is not safe at all. Not as bad as Blind in the Forest um, level was danger, but it's definitely up there. He gets into a storm. Unfortunately, the storm's too strong, breaks his, the uh, feather off. And he goes falling down to the ground. Um, they end up getting separated. Ori lands in the, um, I think it's called the Inkland Mash, Mash, Mashes, whatever it's called. And, and um, the owl little dude ends up landing in some place called the Sunlit Woods. Yeah, and um, guys, trust me, it's the worst place in the game you can land. I mean, if you're, trying, if you're trying to scare people, that is the worst place to land. I mean, out of all places to land, he lands in the most dangerous location in the game, guys. Because that area is controlled by um, Sheik, I think it's called. And he's basically a de deformed owl. So, based on what the story was indicating, I believe the corruption, or, yeah, corruption, got to the egg and uh, mutated him a little bit. So, he's... He was kind of picked on by the other owls, and because of that, he has nothing but hatred and darkness in his heart. So he's an enemy of everyone. He attacks anything that makes noise. Unlike the previous owl, he's much worse than her because she's... Actually, no, I'll take it back. I don't think he's as bad, but definitely bad, nevertheless. And not to mention, a lot of the creatures in that game are really different because there's a lot of new um, enemies. So you've got the general... Um, I forgot their names, so I'm not good with names, memory names, so forgive me if I'm always telling them wrong. Um, the little slime dudes, there's a fair bit of them on there, there's a few different versions of them, like the previous game had a few different versions. But they're not the only enemy, you got the enemy that shoots those fireballs at you. There's also a lot of other new enemies, um, you got the one that jumps around. Um, the only enemy that wasn't really in there, this one was the um, little dude that curls up into a ball. And we'll try to chase out, and if he hits everything, it explodes. That's the only enemy I did not see in it. But there's a lot of other enemies in there, just it's dangerous, or even more dangerous. And they're basically hard hitters, too, guys. But the game is really good. I like the way they dumped the um, the, how they used to the light, what's it called, light spirits. So instead of having it like um, a point, a, basically a point system, it's more like a currency. So it's treated more like money. Or rubies or gold pieces and shit like that, you know, in other games. Um, 
So it's interesting why it gives you motivation to keep hitting enemies, because in the blind forest you don't actually need to kill all the enemies to get all the upgrades. At least not easy and normal. Hard, yeah, you probably need it requires a bit more determination, but other than that, um, but yeah, that's a that's an interesting way of doing it. I actually liked it. Uh, hopefully one day they'll make a third one, because I think there is a possibility for a third one, because just the way the ending went. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, there's a lot of, this one's more battle orientated, so there's a lot of fighting, not just randomly pushing the button to shoot the um, spirit. You actually got a light weapon and a lot of other weapons like a bow and arrow, a spear, and the light balls, there's previous one and many others. My main weapon was the um, the, uh, the light spear, or light, sorry, the light sword and the um, arrows, they do a lot of damage. If I'm, if I'm giving any um, information to the new players for this game, don't fight the bosses until later. I recommend them doing that. Just look around. Once you know there's a boss, just abandon it. Um, and then go to another area, do all those things. You get to the point, guys, where you'll upgrade a fair bit and you'll get some serious power upgrades as well. And then, once you've done all that, and then go back to the bosses. Trust me, it'll be making your life so much easier. Made mine. Um, I've got no... I've got no... Um, shame and doing that because it just makes it easy to do um yeah so as i said guys it's a good game it is a really good game if i'm going to give it a, a rating it's really high up there i'll say about it probably about eight i mean the only thing that really puts me down is there's no map for the um i think they call it the gorlock orb orb and and the spirit orbs other than that yeah other than that it's pretty good guys it's a Good game, you will probably have to use it in it if you want to get 100%, just to make sure you don't miss areas, because just be careful too, guys. I did. I used the internet too, and um, one of the um, areas said there was a light, um, a spirit light ball, and it wasn't there, or it was up further. So sometimes the internet's not 100%, so just be a little careful. Sometimes I might get it a little bit wrong, so. I want to get later in the game, guys, you get all these new shards. Now, these shards are interesting, so I like them. Because what they do is they give you abilities like I'll say stick you um the ability to stick in the walls. This one they also give you the ability to give um enemies to drop more light light balls or life balls or energy balls and so on. They also can be there to make it harder. So say um one further down the track near the end, it makes the enemy seventy percent harder, but it makes them drop seventy more um seventy percent more um life stuff. So, they're definitely worth collecting if you want to try to get buy all the um, stuff like I did. Um, you don't really need to, but I did it in a way, so sue me. Um, I enjoyed doing that. It just made the game a bit more fun. Um, there's also another one where you can increase the rate on how fast the enemy spawn. Um, just let you know, um, that one's a very dangerous one. If you're in an area that's really hard, I don't recommend using it. If you're in an area, easy area, yeah, you can use it for sure. Because when it, they respawn, they respawn almost straight away. Like a few seconds, if you're lucky. They're real bad. Uh, I think it's a bit too quick, personally. It feels like a little bit slower. But, yeah, that's just me, guys. Um, other than that, I enjoy it. I enjoy mix, mix and matching all different... I had all different ones for different purposes. For example, boss ones. I had the arrows. Like, um, There's one where you can shoot three. Instead of shooting one arrow, it, it can split to three. And there's another one where you get the 25% um, quick speed, so it basically makes your arrow shoot 25% faster. Things like that will definitely be useful, boss battles specifically, that's why I said later in the game, do them. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's see what else. The story is pretty damn good, guys. I, I got no issue with the story. It's a story driven game anyway, this one. Um, it's pretty fun. I mean, the whole area is completely beautiful. The game's graphics. Um, it doesn't need to be have like the best graphics in the history of graphics, guys. I'm not really into graphics like I used to be when I was younger. So I'll explain a bit more on that. But yeah, the graphics are more beautiful than anything else. They didn't really need... They, didn't, they went pretty far with it, I believe. It looks like it's a fun um, 2D action game. Um, it's I got the Castlevania or Metroid first type of game. Um, that's why I love it because it's unlike those games. Like Metroid, especially Metroid, um, Castlevania... I haven't played much Castlevania, but, you know, I have played a little bit down there. And many others. So, yeah, I want to play more of those type of games. So, let me know any of them that you guys know of. And I would love to hear, hear what you guys think. Now, um, 
as I said, I already talked about the sound. I'm not really a big sound person, so you won't hear me talk about sound or that too much. Graphics you'll hear me talk about and gameplay mostly. As far as I'm concerned, guys, the controls are fantastic. I've never really had an issue with the controls. Um, there are times where it's a bit sloppy or a bit unfair, but most of the time you have no trouble. Like I said, it's a great game. If you want to do it 100%, guys, go for it. I mean, like on hard, I'm not doing hard. That would take too long. I think hard is a bit overkill, guys. But for you guys, yeah, go for it. Give it a shot. Try it. I would love to see if you guys can do it. Um, let put a link of you doing it or something. i will be great to see. Um, on that, I think we're finished, guys. I know it's not a very long um, review. I don't do long like long videos generally because. I'm a person who likes to get to the point. I don't like to fist fight around. I don't like talking a lot. I like to get to the point. At least for now, until my, my throat improves and talking becomes easier. Maybe then I'll probably start taking a bit longer. But yeah, it's a great game, guys. So I've got two other games I'm working on. One is um, Power Worlds. It's no surprise there. And um, I forgot what the other one's called. Was it Oceani Travel or something? I can't remember the name of it. It was one that only just dropped on the um, Xbox Game Pass like recently, like, I think a week ago or something, when the um, Summer Game Festival was on. But yeah, on that note, I'm going to finish it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know. So let me know how you think of this video, guys. If I can deal with some improvements, make it a little bit longer, maybe a bit more structured. You know, there's a lot of opportunity here, guys. Cheers.